it's little. Okay, so it's okay. like like lava and it's you, moving over the thing. Yeah, yeah. So you put it on there, and then you take a big swiper of some sort. Uh, I like use a the thing you squeegee. Uh, I use a squeegee <laughs> from a bathroom. That's exactly what I use. <laughs> There's just nothing special about it. And so here, what you do is you put the white or lighter colors, and you get them the, on the bottom. Okay, uh, and then you pull it up through, or you pour, and then once you've done that, you have the flow. Okay. Okay, and then, and here is something where I like to add water, the washers to add more detail and more depth. It wasn't the final finished product to me, it didn't have enough texture. And this actually is a panel, it's a wood panel. So I shake the wood panel, and, uh, oh, that's and then you got their pattern. And so though I put the heavy ones at the bottom, the middle of the range, and the light ones at the top. I did that personally, but when I shook it, this is what happened. And that's what I tried to capture, and actually did capture it by taking a photo and putting them back where they were. I love that you did this on wood because that grain texture, yeah. that if I try to picture that being yeah. gone, I, I really like that contrast of strong up and down to this like wavy. Yeah, and I, so it's, it's a, the whole concept for me is flow. And I was a hydrologist. That's what I actually did as a mathematician. I was a hydrologist for 30 years, dealing with water for 30 years. I like things that flow. <laughs> okay. Or something like this is more, um, uh, more, this was a uh, aspen. So it's an aspen grove. And although well, the colors are right. The, right. The, yeah. the things are, but Abstract. you can see the textures there. And the texture is quite elaborate, and it, to me, I think I do get a feeling for trees from this. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that was done with a very large blade, like they put wallpaper up on. Uh, that's how you're getting those, yes. those edges? That's how you're getting the edges. And then I go, you know, you just pull, pull short strokes, and you try to pull the strokes the same. So that therefore you wind up with a pattern very similar, but then you want variation and you go back and you, so it's, it's you're painting, but you're painting with a tool rather than painting with a brush. So you do an undercoat, you know, some artists call it an undercoat, even the professional artists who, um, not professional artists, but the uh, uh, more traditional artists, I guess is the word I'm trying to look for. The more traditional artists um, will always do an undercoat. They'll paint their canvas before they paint their painting. So, so I put down, for me, it's texture. I put down the texture before I paint the painting. Did you know it was going to be aspen trees when you did the undercoat? Yes, that was my goal. Okay. So that's one of the, so this is one of the ones where I, I had obviously been there because I was, I was in, the, in part of the process because it wasn't an emotion scape. It was more of a, this is more representational art to me, although people still will call it an abstract. Sure, but this yeah. is an abstract landscape. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's an abstract landscape. Yeah. Or in some science, somebody's got a landscape, uh, they call it expressionism. But um, it's another word that's sometimes used. Uh, um, uh, but anyway, I, 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 they're all to me emotion scapes. Now, here, if you, so this was created by a later ruler here when I, before I was painting. And then I painted it and got the texture, and then I pulled it off, and then I had the depth, and then I painted it. Yeah, you have this awesome ridge. Yeah, you have an officer that's in the smaller one here, obviously. So, and then I actually had a friend, and it's always fun, uh, who sent me a picture of clouds that look exactly like this. They look exactly like this, which is always what you're saying. You're doing something abstract and different in your mind, but in reality, um, in nature, there's a lot of chaos. So if you look for it, you'll see chaos in nature, and see, and so you obviously see chaos in my paintings to some degree. But I love the texture here. Just rub your fingers on it. You can't. Oh, goodness. It's very tactile. That is really cool. Because yeah, I, I can tell it's bumpy, but it also uh, feels really smooth, too. Yeah, yeah. I have one that I did with a, a knife. I pulled this way and this way, and it makes these like ribbons. I have it at home. I rub my hand on it all the time because I like the feel of it. <laughs> but uh, but this is so, this would be a mixed media because I've been included into the paint as a medium. In this case, it was, I think, acrylic beads. Here's, uh, here's where I've actually used volcanic rock in the, in the, in right. the, yeah, in the painting. It gives, I guess it's sort of a volcanic feel to me. Uh, even though it's not, doesn't look like a volcano, it still gives me that landscape, you know, of sort of Hawaii. Or, oh, I love these. Um, a friend of mine did tell me that they thought this was like 
looking at the understructure when God was building the world. Oh, the, the cool. things he hung things sure. onto. You know, the structure underneath. And I like that I had that in a lot of my paintings where it gives me that feel of connection where I felt I didn't have it. So um, and it also gives me a feeling I'm looking at oh it's underneath what is there. All this um color on the top of the texture That's, here in orange just looks like it's burned, but it's not. It's the color you you have other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks take, like you lit it on fire. You know, well, you don't have to do that. What you do, okay, is when you're using this, you see these, this color was painted last, right? Right. And black, because it's on top of everything. So when you're doing that, you just take whatever tool I was using, I can't remember the one, and you just scrape it right across the top. Without pressing too hard. Right, not pressing too hard, and it just leaves this black very so often. And then I must have thought that, okay, well, I need a little yellow, and I did the same with the yellow. It looks like the black is on top of the yellow, but it's the same process. So I did a little yellow across the orange, and that's to break up the orange. Yeah. Here is a painting, painting with a comb. So this picture... Like a hair comb. A hair comb. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something I found that you can use, and so this is a life to find a way. And I'm just, you know, you're just, you're just doing this. Obviously, this one whole piece here was done with one stroke. Yeah. That's one continuous stroke, and then I added the other for um, structure. So. Do you ever look at something like that, that's a one continuous thing on top of something else, and then say, I don't like that, I have to <laughs> redo whatever it was I just played with and do it again, or do you just work with what happened? Yeah, I, I go with what, what happens. So the, the thing here, the process here was, when I was done, I didn't think it was. I didn't think the composition was complete. So I added these pieces. Okay. So that's that. But if, without adding those pieces, I wouldn't have been happy with the painting. So the problem, the thing is, I guess that comes to my mind is, what do you, what is an ex, what an extra is needed? And I've done some of these that are extremely complex. I have one that's called Madonna and Child with Angel that has the three figures in there and they were all done with a comb. So it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of an interesting one. Um, this is I recently traveled across Europe and when I did I, was, I saw this, it was autumn when I did this and this was to me vines on a wall and probably Passau is where I saw those or somewhere near Passau. The vineyard, the vineyard area might have been where I was but anyway that's that's uh, once again, trying to get the texture underneath first, and then painting on top of it. So that's such an obvious thing for me to say, but you must use a lot of paint. I do. <laughs> I do. My paint. See, sometimes you know, I, my paintings are relatively cheap because I, you know, well, I don't say cheap. They're relatively inexpensive. That's the right word. They're relatively inexpensive because I want everybody to own art. So I don't try to out for, uh, overprice my paintings. But at the same time, there's a limit. You got to, you got to do it. What you pay for the canvas, what you pay for this, what you pay for that, what, you know, and then, you know, with me, it's all this paint. I don't know how some there's some paintings that I have like two or three hundred dollars of painting in the painting itself. Wow. You know, um, and then that's why I say, wow, wait a minute, how long am I gonna get that? <laughs> yeah. 